five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we go from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, looking you straight in the face. Yeah. Looking you straight in the face is my ex-wife Ronnie Bennett. Hi Ronnie. Hi, how are you? Do you like being introduced as my ex-wife? It's better than being introduced as my wife. I really <laughs> the word former. Former? Yeah. Former wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Number number three in a series. Number two in a series. You were number two. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then there was three and then there was four. Boy. Well, you know, I'm going to keep doing I it thinking, till. I, I was thinking when we first connected up on Skype this morning to do this, that you and I have spent collectively way too much time either together or in our separate lives doing live radio or television because we are never late for anything ever <laughs> i wait till the exact second that i'm supposed to call you and then i call you <laughs> i used to work for a woman though who told me that when you had made an appointment with someone we'll talk on thursday at two or something like that mm -hmm. that she if it was her turn to call she would always wait until either she would call a few minutes early or wait and call a few minutes late because she didn't want anybody to think she was sitting around staring at the phone waiting for the call. <laughs> you know who else is right on time to the second? And you count them. When I've done, I had to go to like uh, uh, technical support at Microsoft. And I get somebody there and I got a problem and they say, well, I don't have an answer to the problem. But what I'll do is I will check with my people and I will get back to you and I will call you. What's a good time for you on Thursday? And I go, well, uh, uh, three o'clock. They go, okay, we'll call you back at three o'clock on Thursday. Now, you know, when people say that, you sometimes never even hear from them, right? With technical support. Every time they have done that, right on the minute, my phone rings. The representative yeah. is ready to talk I with you. I'm sitting around staring at the clock. <laughs> the representative is on the line waiting for you. Uh, uh, if you want to talk to them, press one. So you press one, and there she is. And I go, <laughs> this, you know, there's no other company I know of besides um, um, Microsoft that is that punctual or is that assiduous in doing their job. Uh, not Microsoft, excuse me, Apple. Apple. It was Apple. Excuse the whole me. The story was about Apple. Y yeah, because Micro Microsoft, Microsoft sucks because you can't even find a uh, uh, tech support number for them. But no, uh, Apple. It was Apple. Oh, you can get one for Amazon, but they try to hide it. Yeah. Well, you, no, not Amazon. You, you, I was talking about Microsoft. No, no you, I'm just saying yeah. that that's true. What is true about Amazon? Amazon, it used to be that you, there was a thing you went to that when we call, and then you give them the number, and then they call you back. But that's not on the page anymore. No, and the other thing is that people, that, that the way to get a real phone number to real yeah. customer service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I had a problem with my bank a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, um, and I had to call customer service. Mm -hmm. And... They aren't called customer service representatives there anymore. They're called bankers. Right. I answer the phone and tell you how to <laughs> fix your account, and I'm a banker. I'm a banker. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love like uh, companies like Walmart that call the people who work for them associates. Uh, really? They're associates? Oh, how much, how much of the company do they own? <laughs> okay. And anyway, I discovered on a lot of those places that try to hide their customer service number mm -hmm. that if you just Google, doesn't matter, any search engine, um, you know, like Amazon Helpline or something like that, you'll get it a lot faster than looking for it on their website. Well, if you Google it, Google usually has the number come up in big letters, in big yes. letters. Yes, what I'm saying is that you do that instead of, you know, spending 20 minutes trying to find it on the website. You know something? I've never said, what is the customer support number for Google? It might come up with a small number. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I've never done that. 
But then again, I've never bought anything from Google, so yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, I, I I got up a half hour before this call, so if I seem a little groggy, uh, it's because I'm here with my extra. This is my double caffeine coffee. This is uh, yes, and I also bought one called uh, Napalm. You so. didn't used to drink coffee. No, I know I didn't. Now I do two cups a day. Oh. Yeah. But it, oh, like it's like a, it's some kind of disease I've got. Oh, you're drinking no, coffee. No, 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 oh. I just you know you never did before, or you didn't when we were living together. Well, anyway, so I got one called Napalm, and their slogan is um, um, uh, the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> you know, coffee. I always knew that coffee gave me a boost in the morning. But it's only been in the last couple of years, which means, of course, I relate it to the cancer, but I don't know that it is. But there's a real difference now. When I first sit up in bed and, you know, I'm about to get up and I really, it was so comfortable. It's always so comfortable. You don't want to get up. Right. Um, at, uh, and I get, I thought, Why, how am I going to get through this? You know, I kind of wish, you know, someone just brought me the cup of coffee that I could do until I woke up enough. But no, I have to go make the coffee. And I'm thinking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And as soon as the coffee's ready, as soon as I've had the first few sips, I can feel a real jolt that, really? oh, I'm awake now. No, I don't need to go back to bed. <laughs> really? I I just stay tired. You know, I mean, the co I, I don't, I, the coffee does something, but it doesn't do a lot. I'll tell you what happened. So I've got this neuropathy, right? So my, I have a friend who has neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy, and he's been taking um, um, Lyrica. And he says, it's great, it really helps. So I called my urologist and I said, can I get Lyrica? And he said, sure, you know, so I put in a prescription for him. Well, it's a great drug, Yeah, it puts me to sleep and I am out for eight hours, okay? In fact, today I was out for eight and a half hours, <laughs> all right? And it's pretty solid sleep, too. I don't even get up to pee or do anything like that. Uh, but the thing it does is it makes me clumsy, okay? Good thing you don't have to drive a car. It makes me a bit clumsy. And uh, it is, um, um, uh, the other thing is that when I'm trying to do simple things like put the whole show together and get it on, I have to really think about which button to push, where before it was just like, blah, 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 blah. But it does, and I, that's, you know, a, that's a point I wanted to bring up to you. Yeah. I don't know that, just let me say this. That yeah. I'm not sure that that's the drug, that I have to do that. There are certain things, especially on a keyboard and mm -hmm. doing HTML to get my stories look pretty and everything, Yeah. Um, that I think I used to do what you described. If, you just hit the buttons. You don't even think what you've done it so many times. Your yeah, fingers do it automatically. Exactly. And now I have to think a little harder. Not terribly, but I'm aware of, wait, what's the next step in this procedure? Um, and I, so I'm not sure it's the drug. Maybe it's just old age. Well, that could be. But I, I think I find that it's happening more with the drug. That There are certain things I, I screw up and on. And take it so much. Huh? Then don't take it so much. Yeah, well, I take it. I think that's a hint. <laughs> you're supposed to take it twice a day, and I take it once a day. Uh, so that's one good thing. The only thing is I'll take it twice a day like today because I don't have a show to do tonight, so I don't mind taking one during the day as well. But it's getting a little less. I'm getting a little more the ability to do these things. So, you know, but what I, here was the point. I find that doctors are willing to give you almost any drug. To That's show. not true. Wait it's minute, all dependent on the doctor. Wait a minute. Hold on. To, uh, when you get older, to shut you up because they figure, ah. Well. I think so. I don't think so. I went through terrible, terrible, terrible pains with my hands, with all the other body pains I oh, was yeah. having for you most were of the summer. This, yeah. And nobody ever said a word to me about those kind of drugs. They said, the first one said to me, have you tried Advil? <laughs> and um, it ended up that at the, when the pains were at their worst, an Advil um, with, with an extra strength Tylenol in the middle between two Advil mm -hmm. uh, you know, pills uh, worked. Yeah. Well, you know what? What they've said, 
over the years, the most powerful painkiller you've got in your cabinet is aspirin. That well, that, that has a lot of stomach problems and others. Well, they have it so it's coated and it doesn't as much. But the thing is, they said that if aspirin were invented today, it would be a controlled substance. I've been hearing that for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the, no, that when it was invented, nobody thought about that. But uh, it is a, it's always been a very strong drug. You got a headache, the headache goes away, you know? And if your stomach can take it, it's good. Because there's always some contraindication. There are plenty of others that work, too. And uh, Marjorie has uh, this uh, uh, extra strength uh, ibuprofen 800s, uh, ibuprofen 800s, which are prescription. That works. That's really good, you know. Yeah, uh, I guess so. so. I don't have that many. I mean, this this summer bout of pain, um, you know, I mean, nothing like that's ever happened in my life, and I've occasionally had a headache. Mostly, I don't have pain. Well, you you got you got cancer. My wife has <laughs> really bad back pains, but they give her like really heavy duty, like uh, Dilaudid and so on, as painkillers. But they but they they monitor her rigorously to make sure she doesn't become addicted. I mean, if if it's doing something to relieve the pain, it's not going to be addictive. But if you do too much where it just gets you high, then you got a problem, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll right, ask well, them. What, what do you think, for especially for older people who are going to need it, that they're, they've got this war on opioids? Well, here's the thing about that, and I wrote, I, I did a column about it, so I won't go on at any mm-hmm. length, but um, is... For all the screaming and yelling, and it's a terrible thing having pe- this many people die of opioids every day. Mm-hmm. But it's not old people who are doing it. And there are old people with chronic pain that have been using those drugs responsibly for years. And then they're suddenly cut off because doctors and health centers have decided they have to be part of helping the opioid problem. Or I don't know if whether the government checks in on them or not. Um, of, of how many prescriptions they're writing of different things. From what I've read, it would be a good idea if somebody checked in on some of those people who are writing so many prescriptions. But um, I, uh, I don't, it's not old people. And you can't just substitute an aspirin and expect it to do the same job. Yeah, well, the thing is that my wife uh, takes these, these what are essentially opioids. Um, for her pain, once a year she has to have a pee test mm-hmm. because they want to make sure she doesn't have marijuana in her system. And she said, "Why?" You know. And they said, "It's just federal law. We can't prescribe it if you've got marijuana in your system." And of course, it's, she well, loves. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Is has New York State yet legalized? No. No, they, they, we have it for medical purposes, however. but So you know. why couldn't she be taking it for that? Well, of course. But what I'm saying is they still say we, we have to give you a pee test to make sure you're not taking marijuana because the, the law says we can't give you opioids. Now, I find that kind of strange, but she loves her pot, so once a year she has to like not pee and not uh, smoke for three weeks. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and then she can get a clean test. Or, or I give her my urine and she goes in with that. Uh, no, uh, but I mean, it, so I mean, they're getting, what I'm saying is old people need their pain relieved. And this war on opioids is killing their chance for getting the drugs they need to relieve their pain. That's and, what and you're right. It is younger people. The, if you look at the reports on television, oh, my daughter who was 13 died of an opioid. And it's always kids. It's not the older people. It only says, oh, old Joe, who was 85, died of an opioid overdose because he took two. No, you don't hear that. You know what's funny about that with old people, or especially old people who are dying of mm-hmm. something, is that when my mother was, um, when I got there to take care of her, she had a bottle of just pain pills, whatever they were, and a bottle of liquid morphine. And the doctor had explained to me how to use them. Well, my mother never said anything about pain. And I had no idea if she was in pain or just and being stoic or what. Mm-hmm. And so one day she finally she said, do you think we could try the liquid morphine? 
well, yes, have you been sitting there hurting all this time, Mom, without telling me? So we did. And she really got weird in the head and started hallucinating. And we had some very strange but funny conversations. And eventually it wore off. And she said to me, I'm not going to do that. That would, I might get addicted. That did terrible things to me. And I'm thinking this woman can't get out of bed on her own. And she's worried about running down to the corner and robbing the candy store. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, you know, in those days, morphine was maybe the biggest painkiller we had. But these painkillers we've got now are make morphine look like a baby. You know, well, I told you my little fentanyl story. No, no. Um, when I was the morning after the surgery, the big surgery, somebody, and I only remember this vaguely, came and it, they, they, I remember them pushing my back to get me to sit up. Mm -hmm. And he puts, I saw this little metal thing that I couldn't see too clearly. And he put it in the middle of my back. And I, all I was thinking is, mm -hmm. And now he's going to have me lie down and there's a metal thing poking in my back. That's going to hurt. And he laid me down and it didn't hurt. And for three days, nobody had to be bringing me pain pills or anything. I just was, you know, coming out of 12 hours or more of, of uh, anesthesia and being cut open and all of that. And on the, after three days, the same guy came and took that thing out of my back. And I later found out it was fentanyl. And I am here to tell you, I know exactly how people get hooked on that. <laughs> <laughs> it is, oh, it was, it wasn't that just that the pain went away. Mm -hmm. It was that I just felt so good, completely out of it and bad, but I sure felt good. Well, I mean, yeah, but you know what happens? You had fentanyl, number one, you had it administered to you under controlled situations where with drug addicts, it's, you know, they don't know how much fentanyl is in something and it can kill them. But also, you had real pain and the fentanyl goes to, to the job of taking care of that pain. The side effect is it makes you feel real good, you know. Well, you know, only once before... Um, I had morphine many decades ago for something. In fact, I still lived in Marin County then. Mm -hmm. It was before we were even married. And uh, By the way, we're talking about being drug addicts now, folks. Go yes, ahead. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I had some kind of terrible pain, and I was in the hospital, and they kept upping whatever painkillers they had in those days until we got to morphine. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I really hallucinated during that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't, uh, I felt that fentanyl made me feel, it, it didn't make me feel this wonderful, wonderful warmth and goodness all around me and everything that fentanyl did. Um, but it was pretty, it was, yeah, I understood that they were hallucinations, so they were kind of fun to watch. Well, I don't, but, I, oh, but yeah. it didn't take away the pain. Yeah. It just made me not care. Not care. So I could lie there and think, gee, that may be the worst pain I've ever had. And then I would go off thinking about something else. Well, fuck it. I'm feeling too good. I won't let the pain <laughs> get to me. I, uh, uh, you know, I mean, these are, these are the pills. They're actually, it's lyrical, but Lyrica is uh, pre-Gabalin, it's called. And um, the first couple of days I took it, I mean, I got really high. I mean, I, you know, now I don't as much. Why do you take a sleeping... It's not a, no, during the day because they say take it twice a day. Okay, but they this is also for daytime use. I mean, now that I take it, if I take it during the day, I don't go to sleep. I think what happens is it isn't doesn't put me to sleep. It keeps me asleep. Okay, so that if I if I didn't want to go to sleep, I just go back to doing whatever I was doing with a little bit of the pre gabbling in me. Okay, and a little bit of the buzz that it gives me. But uh, if I want to go to sleep. It puts me out, and I, 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 today I was out for eight and a half hours. You know, amazing. Good for you. Hmm? I don't get that much sleep. Here. I mean, I get enough sleep now. With I use cannabis, but um, but eight and a half is I can't ever make it. Oh yeah, long. yeah. Make a big deal out of the fact you live in a state where you can easily get cannabis. You know, you just walk into a little store. And they oh, shut up! Shut up! <laughs> you know, I mean, I've often said, do I have to get cancer in order to smoke marijuana? You know, come on. You know, I mean, it, 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 I don't smoke it. I take edibles. This whole idea of it being medically available here in New York. I mean, you would think New York would be the first state to legalize it. Right. But no, 
You got Colorado. You know, come on, give me a break. You know, I, it still isn't legal here. You still have to go get a prescription from your doctor. You know, it, it's ridiculous. Well, it's changing faster than most things change. That Especially most taboo kinds of things don't change very frequently. And when they do, it takes a long, long time. Cannabis is going much faster, and it looks like psilocybin may join it um, in the next election. Well, you saw the thing on 60 Minutes. Yes. But yeah. The, yeah. What did you think um, of it? Because you you kind of gone through that. Yeah, and I didn't think it was a very good piece. I didn't like it. It was, it was just so superficial that you know this one very lovely lady, isn't she? She was so pretty. That old woman who I've forgotten what kind of cancer she had. Yeah. So pretty. Um, but uh, it, it was it was pretty it was superficial compared to. In case people don't know, this was a, a thin piece of 60 Minutes did on the use of psilocybin uh, with with cancer patients and other people. For who, end of life anxiety. End of life anxiety, yeah. yeah. And, uh, which is what I did last and December. And it works. You did it and it works. Um, yes, it does. And more and more uh, respected hospitals like NYU and John Hopkins, they've both been testing psilocybin and other psychedelics for several years now. And some other um, research facilities are joining them, and it's and it's on the ballot in Oregon and in Denver. Not yeah. all of Colorado, just Denver. Just Denver. <laughs> um, uh, for the ne for next year's elections, so we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, the thing is that it's funny that they say, "Oh, well, some of these drugs actually may be good for people." Blah 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 blah. Look, we knew that LSD. We knew was very good for handling a lot of different situations uh, and that it was very good if you had uh, if you had cancer for instance and helping you deal with it uh, but they stopped all um, all research into LSD because suddenly it became a news fad to say oh look this drug is going is ruining our youth you know and so uh, LSD a drug which had re really good reason to be looking into it okay because it was good at, at curing a lot of things and getting people to stop a lot of things it was good with addiction oddly enough was completely stifled and we haven't done anything with it in something like 30 40 years and now they're looking at it and say well, hey, it no, might that's be good not true they started you have to get permission from the government but these the, these usually college affiliated research centers that are working with that started eight or ten years ago at least and they've been doing it very quietly and not making any noise about it because of what you just talked about or, yeah. you know but um and they're making just astonishing discoveries well a guy by the name of tim leary and richard albert were working at i think harvard and they were studying LSD, and they found in one study they did where they went to a prison that they lowered the recidivism rate by, I think, 80% with people who had taken LSD. Uh, because, you know, you, you then become introspective and you start getting feelings about yourself and you can start, it's kind of a form of psychoanalysis. It is a form of psychoanalysis because what LSD was break down the barrier between the conscious and the subconscious and they started flowing into each other and you started seeing stuff about yourself you normally didn't see. And they studied that and of course they were then thrown out of Harvard for studying it. So of course Tim Leary became this, what can we call it, uh, this, uh, uh, trumpeter for drugs and uh, Richard Alpert became Baba Ramdas and that's the end of that story. <laughs> you know. But it, it was being studied for those things, and it, it was terrible that all of a sudden it it was stifled. Okay, you know, anytime you have to go out and get federal approval for everything, it gets stifled. So, but uh, the, but the psilocybin helped you, and uh, it may be, and there may be other drugs like psilocybin. I mean, it doesn't have to there be just. Many. Huh? There, we we know of many. I mean we. The, uh, the, the original drug of this sort, the one that the Indians used, was peyote, which probably has some curative effects that way. But it, um, um, how long, can, can I ask you how long you were under the drug to get the effect? 
I don't remember, five hours? Five hours, yeah. I mean, that isn't what it takes to get yeah. an effect. That's how long before it stops being effective. Well, they said know? one of the reasons why these drugs never became popular was because we have to remember that psychiatrists are, are a professional business that makes money. And if you want put somebody on LSD or on psilocybin, you have to take anywhere from five to eight hours of sitting there with them, guiding them on their trip and, and getting the benefits out of it. And that a lot of doctors didn't want to have to spend that much time. I don't think that had anything to do with the government taking. No, not the government, but I'm saying a lot of a lot of a lot of psychiatrists say, "Oh, I got to spend eight hours with somebody. I have to sit no, there." I wouldn't them. take I wouldn't take that on the word of a psychiatrist. I have no idea if he's studied this, if he knows anything about exactly. it. Exactly. Um, so I don't think that's an argument to be made. I don't think any. But the of person you were with spent all that time with you, right? Yes. Yeah, and talking to you, and, and I paid dearly for that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, and you should. And, and I mean, paid in money, not not in you know. Yeah, and you had to pay for it, and it's too bad that Medicare doesn't take care of it. You know. Well, I see it as something that if it's as promising as these tests, and you should really take the time to look online and see the results of these tests. They're jaw droppingly good. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of what they've done for people, mm. and uh, and I can see that happening, you know. And I th- I think more swiftly than it usually does. But then you have to get. Then the one thing though is you have to get Medicare to approve it, and and to get Medicare to approve it takes a while, you know. Take it, it, they're they're a little reluctant on stuff like that. Um, it. Uh, you know, I don't know what the steps are, and I think it's kind of, I don't want to talk about it. It kind of bores me, sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, go ahead. No. Uh, I, what the steps well, are. All, we're, all I'm trying to say is there are alter- alternatives to to uh, painkillers, you know, I mean, and to opioids and so on. And uh, I'm sure this has gone a long, that went a long way to help you through this whole thing. And well, um, not that if, if they necessarily have anything to do with pain. Mm hmm. Psychic pain, but I mean physical pain. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Um, and different drugs do slightly different things. And mm-hmm. so, um, what what psilocybin and LSD is related closely related to psilocybin. Yeah. Um, is uh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, never mind anyway, because we've run over time. We have. Yes, we just kept talking and talking and talking and talking before you know it. Uh, usually we do this for 25 minutes. We're up to 27 minutes right now. And and I told you before we started, you said, what do you want to talk about today? And I said, uh, let's. Uh, we should talk about Trump. Oh, we didn't get to that, Listen, did we? Listen, forget it. Let's run over here. Uh, well, <laughs> your current feelings on Donald Trump. To begin with, my first feeling is, do you ever hear anybody in the news ever refer to him as President Trump? No, I haven't noticed they, one. They say, they say Trump. Sometimes they say Mr. Trump. No, Nobody you should w- always say, the first on the first mention, it should always be president. They don't They do not do that with him. I haven't noticed. I mean, it's yeah. just, all the rules are so broken, there's no point in trying to stand up for any of them yeah. anymore. Yeah, well, so are, uh, we, are, we, are we now living with an insane crook? Is that what we're doing? Apparently, but you know what? My bigger feeling is the two bigger feelings this week. Both of them um, heartbreaking, deeply heartbreaking, is the death of Elijah Cummings. Mm -hmm. He's a great, great, and he was only 68. Yeah, yeah. I know to someone who's 25 to say only 68 sounds really stupid, but it's not the age people should be dying. At. They say he was sick for something like 20 years, that he has been battling whatever it was for 20 years. I don't know. But the yeah. other thing was the Kurds. Yeah. So I am right now, since that happened, it's, I'm shamed. You know, my country has made me feel shame about my country. Yeah. And it, it's just awful. It's just awful. I read this morning, I didn't understand this before, that the Kurds are the largest ethnic group in the world that does not have a land. Yeah. A a country. Yeah. Um, And 
And they just made them all leave without making any, putting any thought, ideas, or anything about where they would go. Well, they, they had some land that they claimed uh, 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 above Iraq, and Iraq was always trying to attack them and everything, but they were always pretty peaceful people. It's only in the last couple of years that they've had to get a little more uh, warlike because they've had to protect themselves, you know. Well, they took the brunt of everything of, of cleaning up ISIS to the degree that it is cleaned up. Yeah. Um, I well, mean, 11,000 all... of their people died to six of ours. Well, they, they were responsible for cleaning up Al-Qaeda for Iraq, you know. Well, this week I'm not about that. It's just... <sighs> it just makes you ashamed that you're... You, you know what it is, and I've said this a dozen times on the program. When I was raised as a child in school... I was taught all the good things about America and what we do and what we don't do and why we're good and why they're bad, okay? And all of a sudden I'm going, all these things I learned in school and I thought was America isn't America anymore. I, I think the point is that you're right, is that, is that because you start learning them when you're, what, eight, nine, ten years old, yeah. you think that they're permanent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then it turns out they're not well, permanent. Yeah. I mean, it's happened before to me. Things I thought were set in stone turned out not to be set in stone. But still, uh, it's what it is. And it was just an overwhelmingly sad week. And if you look at it from a certain perspective, mm -hmm. the lies from Mick Mul Mulvaney is... May, Mul 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 Mulvaney. Yeah. yeah. The, the lie, you know, the lie and then the take back of the a lie and everything. It's just a shaming in a way. I mean, um, and, and the Doral thing, I mean, you can't, could he, could any human, even that human being truly believe that that was a good thing to do? Well, apparently he did. And, well, and then apparently he saw... He only said he did. You can't trust any word that comes from that man's mouth. Well, apparently he's, he or somebody close to him saw the blowback was so bad on it and that perhaps he would be in jeopardy through the emoluments clause that they had better get out of Doral and go somewhere else, you know. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, look, I mean, Doral was not a bad idea for a location if he didn't own it. It's a terrible so, wait, idea. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If he didn't own it. No, it's still a terrible idea you wouldn't choose it. You know how many people who lived there were on TV yesterday saying airplanes go over this every 20 minutes? Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, the point the point I'm making is is that... And bed bugs. Bed bugs. <laughs> bed bugs? That's not a joke. They have bed bugs at the round? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and how did you enjoy your trip to America? <laughs> yeah, it makes it just thinking about it kind of makes me feel itchy. Um, so it it was, it was a very very bad week. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 and it we we have a president who's completely. I think the thing that really worries me most of all is we don't have a president who can serve. He's he's literally so unhinged that he can't get the job done. Not that he's ever been doing it. He's too busy watching television and and getting his hints of what to do from the, his TV shows. And and he he's spends too much time writing tweets, going and holding these Nazi-like rallies uh, in, in, in all parts of the country. I want to know when he ever has time. I'm surprised he had time to withdraw troops from uh, from Syria. It's not like he went over there and did it, you no, know. <laughs> no, but he just waves his hand and says, "That's it," you know. And and he said he he acted like he solved the problem this week. That was the pri part that really got to me, is that he pretended like he had solved the problem. Oh well, I solved it now. What do you mean you created it? You know, one of the things I'm sorry about. Yeah. Is that you know history has to take time to bubble up and mm -hmm. mellow and be able to see what happened from a distance of yeah, time yeah. Um, before we really know what was important and what wasn't in history. I'm sorry, I won't be here to see what they write about the Trump presidency, whether it ends soon or not, mm -hmm. um, 30, 20, 30 years from now. 
Yeah. You know, um, that that the be able to see a little more clearly than so many of us that oh, everybody's it, it, too it, close it, to it, it right now. It, it's going to go down as the period of time when nothing happened. Okay, when a guy sat in the office and didn't do anything. Now and the problem is that he's done a great deal of damage. He's done a great there's deal. There's something of like 150 environmental rollbacks he's done with executive orders. Yeah. And and this is like things like now coal companies are allowed to pour their sludge into the local river, things like that. Well, I think our great relief in all of this is that the sum total of uh, global warming is that the entire lower part of uh, Florida will be underwater. And that includes Doral. <laughs> okay, so, you know. And of well, course, I think everything is moot in, in terms of climate change. And yeah, yeah. Nobody will have time to worry about what the, what yeah. was the Donald Trump presidency like if we're... I'm, I'm worried that uh, the polar bear's uh, penises are getting smaller. They are. Now, don't give me that like, oh, Alex, there you go again, because that's important. <laughs> because there you go again, Alex. You always go for sex. They need their Sorry. they need their penises to reproduce. That's what I'm saying. You know, and if they've got their penises are too small, the pen the polar women are going to go. Ah, I don't want that. Have we ever gotten through a conversation without having to discuss sex? No, but we finished it that way. Uh, anyway, I know. There's not going to be any snow anyway for them. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. And also, the you know, polar ice caps are shrinking, and they oh, it's just it's. And he says there's no global warming. <laughs> you know, give me a break. You know, hey, we had a really cool summer this year. There's no global warming. It has nothing to do with it. That's why it was cooler, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, we've... We... I love that there's people who have said to help explain that. Yeah. That people who have said, what the problem is, is you don't know the difference between weather and climate. Ah, very good. And, those are, and I think that's, you know, that's... Yeah. I'm not a meteorologist. It's not a distinction I ever made before in my life. Yeah. But... Makes things easier yeah. to understand. Hey, listen, we've run over by oh, I don't know, twelve minutes or something like that from what we normally do. But gee, this been this has been great. I've enjoyed this. Is we've had something, and and the reason we went over is we've had a lot of stuff to talk about. Always yeah. great talking to you, Ronnie Bennett. They can find you at your blog, which is timegoesby.net. Do we have to remind them? It is really a great blog. It's one of the great blogs. Oh, and, thank you. And one of the originals, I might add. I mean, you were in there really early. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I started this one. Fifteen years. And uh, we'll see you another couple of weeks, okay? Yes. Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there she goes, Ronnie Bennett. Really enjoy talking to Ronnie, as you can imagine. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting to say that you enjoy talking to an ex-wife after all these years. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, let me, uh, let me turn on the, um, the Skype lines. Nothing works right for me anymore, so let's just hope that the Skype works fine tonight. Where is Skype? There we go. Uh, I don't turn it on in advance because some people try to call it, and in spite of the fact that I say I'm not there, it uh, it still rings. Okay, all right, and now I then go and make it active, and there we go. Okay, we're ready to we're ready to uh, we're ready to ramble, as it were. Okay, anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me get that up. Okay, again, all the uh, things ready to go. Let's see if anybody we know uh, gives us a call here. Um, and if you don't, uh, by the way, our, our, uh, our website, part of our website is down. The part where we have the on-demand isn't working tonight. And I think that has something to do with the company who supplies that particular service. So um, if at any point you want to hear the show, I guess the best place to go is iTunes. Uh, after the show is over, because iTunes will have it. 
You know, iTunes will always have it. Spotify has it. Uh, a lot of various things. i got to turn that light on. Uh, a lot of various uh, places. Uh, Spotify, let's see here. Where else can you go? Uh, um, uh, tune in. You can hear the, uh, the live stream that we have. Uh, what other? Who else? Uh, that's uh, iHeartRadio uh, for, for at least this program. Uh, so anyway, okay. There, here comes Phil. Let me see here. Uh, Phil is, uh, oh, he's there, and uh, I've got to take myself off of here. Let me see here. Let's, uh, let's bring Phil over. There you go. Hello, Phil. How are you this evening? All right. Uh, just um, we took the dog for uh, a um, scan and an X-ray, mm -hmm. and they said that uh, they can't find any cancer. What? Yeah. Well, we know that she's going to have it because the tumor was malignant, but it has not spread. It has not metastasized. They haven't found they they did. Uh, what's the scan they do? Uh, ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So that they do to look for internal bleeding mm -hmm. and the X-ray they did to look at her lungs. Thousand dollars. Oh, boy. And uh, didn't find anything. So uh, ah, come back in a couple of months. Does this doggy uh, insurance pay for it? I hope so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't pay for exams, but uh, th this could have been, you know, related to the surgery. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Who knows? So in case people don't know, Phil's dog uh, has been ill and they thought it. Hey, the dog had cancer, but it looks like maybe not. No, no, she has, but it hasn't uh, spread. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to get, I'm going to be one of those lucky ones that have her around for six months. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because only a small percentage lasts six months after this kind of uh, uh, tumor rupture. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the dog, they can't find any cancer. I had another PSA done, mm -hmm. and uh, they found uh, I had a detectable PSA. So that means I got to start going in for a round of more tests. Well, wait a minute. Uh, now, let, let, me, let me get this straight. And by the way, is anybody else going to call tonight? Uh, let me get this straight. They removed your prostate. Yeah. PSA is... Prostate specific antigen. It is something the prostate gives off with, right? Right. Well, so how can you possibly a... have PSA if there's no P? Uh, because some of the prostate um, cancer cells might have, you know, gone around somewhere and then started growing a little. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when they took it out, uh, you know, they, they were using the machete uh, over at Kaiser. So, uh, you know, it would be easy to, you know, lose a few of those errant little they cells. Did, they didn't use something like the cyber knife or whatever? Uh, they used some sort of robotic uh, uh, thing to uh, pierce about five or six spots in my abdomen. And uh, then they go in there uh, with little cameras and the guy's turning the handles and saying, wow, this is pretty neat, you know? Look what I can do. Oh, I got the prize. There was, you know... Oh, it's like like one of those, one of <laughs> yeah. those, yeah. One of those... Yeah, little claw things. The claw machines, the, uh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the guy got the prize and he was done. Yeah. And so... Um, I might have a few cells running around. I don't know if I'm going to need uh, some radiation. David Hajek did uh, something called proton therapy. Right. Part of the reason I didn't do it was uh, it would have probably cost me 50 grand out of pocket uh, because Kaiser didn't cover it. And uh, they don't they don't do that. Right. So um, I, 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 and I talked to a couple of urologists and uh, they said, you know what, just just remove it. You know, then you know that it's gone. Uh, so I removed it. Uh, and, you know, I thought and I said, hey, you know, it was too big anyway. Uh, I had, uh, you know, the usual BPH problems. Mm -hmm. So now then I now read that up to 40, 40 percent of people who had a prostatectomy uh, get a reoccurrence of the cancer uh, within three years. 
it, it, and why is that? Uh, because there are some cells that uh, they were there and they didn't see them or well, get them. If they didn't remove the prostate and they did some other form of therapy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it perhaps that they did the operation that made it spread? There's a possibility, but uh, the thing is, because I got the operation, should I choose to do uh, radiation, I can do it. If I had radiation and it came back, the radiation doesn't really work, according to the articles I've read. Yeah. So, um, Well, what uh, would the next step be here? Radiation? Uh, well, there's some more testing to determine what's going on because, you know, maybe I just have an elevated PSA, you know, uh, uh, you, you can do a watch and wait, which I you don't know, think. Damn it. Do. I wish I were never born with a prostate. Yeah, I know. You know, us. I mean, uh, it is uh, for men, I think, mm -hmm. and, and you know, you women are listening out there and there are very few of you, so it doesn't really matter. They got other stuff. I, well, they got other stuff. But our stuff, this thing is like really, you know, to begin with, even if you don't get cancer, it enlarges. Yeah. Okay. Which causes all kinds of problems. And now I've got an elevated PSA. It hasn't jumped that, you know, that horribly, but it's, yeah. it's there. Yeah. Uh, uh, most people, I think it was at, um, I saw Jeff over the weekend and he yeah. said he, he saw his, uh, he saw his, uh, uh, urologist uh, he had a visit with his urologist and so he brought me up and he said he's almost 80 now and they think he might have prostate cancer and the doctor said oh, that's a no-brainer <laughs> yeah. yeah it is the, I guess it mean what he meant by that was just it's a, gonna happen huh it's gonna it's happen gonna and it's no big deal you know yeah I mean if he said it's a no-brainer it's no big deal yeah uh, I don't think he meant it's a no-brainer he's dying of it uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that was the next sentence. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, I don't know what the, what the next steps are. I contacted a place in San Diego that does proton therapy. Mm -hmm. They called me this morning, but I was in a hurry and I, and I couldn't register and do all the stuff. My question to them was, well, instead of radiation, mm -hmm. can I do proton therapy, which is covered by Medicare, uh, and, uh, can I do that to uh, deal with the uh, errant cells? Yeah. And they'll get back to me. They'll get back to you. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I, it was just a secretary that called me, and I said, this, you know, why did you call? I said, this is why I want to know if uh, this is a treatment that can uh, address uh, this. Yeah. Uh, here is, by the way, hold on a second. Let me just uh, get, uh, get uh, Tony in here. <laughs> Jeff and Tony. Jeff, and I got to add Tony to the picture here. Uh, webhead. Okay. Yeah, he's webhead now. Okay, mm -hmm. that's his thing. All right, there we are. Uh, Jeff, your doctor, your urologist said where my situation was concerned, it was a no brainer. What did he mean by that? I'm going to die? No. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> it means eventually. Get yeah, we're all going to die. Yeah, but what did, what did he mean by that, D? Uh, I think he feels like at your age, yeah, that it's less likely that you have to have surgery. Yeah, yeah, right. That's all. It was, yeah. And remember, I talked about the other guy who's who had the pills yeah. taken. Oh yeah. I'm gonna actually go out to dinner with her, with them tonight. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask him about what his experience was with the pills. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, so, so you think that what the doctor meant was no big deal. That's right. Oh, OK. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Your age, uh, it's common oh, and uh, they'd rather not do anything uh, that you'll probably uh, die from something else like old age before the prostate cancer oh, gets you. Oh, I see. I've got to change something here. Uh, I've got the you with the uh, let's see here. Where is it? <laughs> Scuba diver. There you we know, go. It's funny you said that. I was thinking about some Alex always says, and now it's in my head, Alex. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering what is going to get me. I'm, I'm really being oh, serious. I, 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 you also comic book ink. 
I wonder I, what it is. I, I'm but, sitting around wondering what is it exactly going to get. That's me? a good question. You know? I say to myself, I look at my sores. I was reading a thing. If you don't heal fast, they said that could be a form where you might have cancer. So now if I cut myself, you got to see. I, mean, I wonder. Like, there was a song cancer. some rock group did called Everything Gives You Cancer. Okay. Uh, you know. Uh, I tell you one thing. I hope it's something fast. Yep. Well, my father often said that if I die, he says, I want to get hit by a Mack truck. I like that because yeah. I won't even know what happens. Yeah, I would. Know, I won't know what happens. Boom. That's it. Beating. You know. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, I don't know. I mean, do how do I want to go? Do I want? You know, uh, we. I have my friend, uh, our friend Will Durst, who's had a stroke, and um, cool. he's had some setbacks. There's some infections. And, is that normal for strokes? Infections. That I never heard of. Really, yeah. As. I wonder if he's uh, he was taking some medications or something. It could be, could be. Yeah. But anyway, so you know, I just don't. I don't know that I want to linger. You know, I would like to have some. I guess a heart attack is maybe the best way to go. You 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 really don't know what happened to you, right? You know, yeah, especially if it's in your sleep, you think you're just dreaming. <laughs> then you wake up and say, "Oh shit, he really does exist." Yeah. I'm gonna figure you out. Oh my god, he really is. Oh Jesus! Nobody and I and I was an atheist. Oh fuck! <laughs> I oh. take back everything I said. But you see, yeah. here's the way I look at it. Yeah. If he's a loving God, as is reported in the literature, that's what they say. Okay, he will forgive me, right? Yes. He will say, I, will. I understand why you didn't believe I exist, because it's a little hard thing to swallow, you know? I Isn't understand. Isn't it amazing how you atheists always start finding God at the end of the rainbow, you know? Listen, I wish I believed in God, because, you know, then I wouldn't worry about death. You know, because people go, oh, and when I die, I'm going to go see Aunt Maud, and life is going to yeah. be wonderful. I get a full and, up and, you know, worse. and I would love to live in that stupidity. Okay, you will if you donate to the church. Yeah. yeah, if you donate enough, you'll see Aunt Maud. Well, I consider religion. I, like I, I, I consider religion to be a send me a check. A uh, what? Yeah, send me a check. Uh, he's he, yeah. He, uh, Tony says he wants to see his aunt Liz again. I said okay, to, no problem. Send me a check. She used to play the <laughs> In Sanctum TV shows. She wanted to be an actress. My mother said she was like my great aunt, and she used to always come over, treat us. She didn't have a lot of money, but she would always spend a lot of money on you, like whatever she had. Mm -hmm. Halloween's she coming. To, she used to do the Inner Sanctum TV shows, The Voice, and she would tell you the stories when we go to bed. I used to love it. Like, oh, God, she's getting me scared. <laughs> Halloween is coming, Tony. Yeah. So I always you remember her. May see her. Yeah, yeah. That'd so, be a good vision. Hey, why is my background so light on the uh, on YouTube? It, it, it's not. It's not? No. You're fine. You're fine. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I had you coming through on another thing, though, for a while there. I was, I, I've been fucking up all the time now. I don't care anymore. Let it, let me fuck up. Yeah, I can't press buttons anymore either. I, I you know, calculator buttons, all of that stuff. I got to do it four times. Uh, you know, well, these uh, buttons, are, think, these buttons are small that I've got here. Yeah. You know, I think it's the cancer that does it. You think it's the cancer that yeah, does yeah, it? Absolutely. Oh. That's why I'm having trouble pressing and okay. prodding and doing. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, you know, so I'm, I've, I know I've got this uh, little thing and it's, it's got little, little buttons and, uh, it, it, you know, it's fine, but I, I, and it, it also slips a little bit sometimes uh, when I push on it. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But I had a screw up at the beginning of the show tonight. I started running Ronnie, but that most people don't that won't see that on the rerun because the rerun is just you know clean. The up. run. It's cleaned up. It. But anyway, uh, so um, so anyway, so you think your doctor meant uh, meant that it's a no brainer? I'm not. I shouldn't worry about it, huh? Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you know. Uh, uh, I, Did he ask uh, if he had insurance? <laughs> <laughs> Your mic is off, Jeff. Uh, he got it. <laughs> we, we had lunch on Sunday. Yeah, I know. We, we took the train up to, uh, up to uh, where? Up to what Fairfield. Was Fairfield. 
Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield, Connecticut. They didn't even take us back to their place because they traveled 40 minutes to get to us. You know, uh-huh. so uh, it wasn't like I thought we were going to be right like, really near your place, you know, and we weren't anywhere near it. You know, does a train go up to your place, Jeff, or anywhere closer? There, there's a train um, that you could take a secondary train, yeah, that that would get us close. You got to transfer, yeah, but I don't know how often those actually run on that yeah. train oh so i went to a chiropractor today i went to the chiropractor. i, I was wondering today. if it was today or tomorrow today, yeah today oh, and then i'm going right. back to him on 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 thursday uh it only costs 110 bucks a visit but there he's like doing two visits a week yeah you did know. uh and did the, he have some shrunken heads and i don't know how much medicare <laughs> takes <laughs> care of but we'll see anyway yeah yeah, like, what are you doing, uh, and he did uh, he did some manipulation on me today, and oh, I did it work? came home and I felt much worse. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Really? That happens. Should you know? Does I mean, I'll give him I'll give him another hurt? couple of chances here, and if yeah. it doesn't get somewhat better, I'm not expecting miracles, but somewhat better, then forget it. You know. Uh, Oftentimes, the thing that you have is corrected in, in one session. You know, because uh, there's just you know they manipulate whatever's pinching the nerve, and uh, well, he looked at my done. he looked at my X-rays and he saw what was causing it. And it, it, what all, is it? it all fell into place. Well, no, it's it's you know to, uh, 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 separation in my in my spine, and it's rubbing against a, a nerve. Ah, it's, okay. You know, so. Uh, that's well, what, maybe it's inflamed, you and know, that's why but, you're not feeling. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, I I. I kind of look upon chiropractors as uh, juju science, you know, rattling the bones. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I don't know that my neurologist really knows what the fuck he's doing either. You know? Yeah. Um, And and if they PT'd you... It only goes below the waist. They, they, They PT'd you and, you know, and you had a pinched nerve. You know, uh... Did that exacerbate the, uh, you know, what do you mean? I the think nerve? They PT'd me. Uh, uh, physical therapy. No, I did th- well, physical did therapy, right? but I did it for this, but the physical therapist said he didn't know what he could do for it in particular, but so far as the numbing of the, uh, the, the, uh, the hurting of the feet from walking and stuff, he felt that was, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, Cancer. The foot thing. Uh, uh, oh, but, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It, it plantar fasciitis. That's yeah. I think my sister has that, Alex. Yeah, but something the, with the toes. Yeah. Did the physical yeah. therapist have a strategy? Yeah. Well, he had me rub my feet on a tennis ball, on a golf ball, and oh, it really? actually worked. Uh, I've got to go back to the golf ball because the thing, I, the what thing, happened to the thing you bought that Jeff showed you? You mean this one? This. Yeah, when they put my feet, uh, I, I just look. find that the golf ball for some reason worked better. I don't know why, and now I don't know where the golf ball is. There's the golf ball. It's Where's way down my, there. Uh, thing here. I'd go get it. But... You know, I was watching the thing on the uh, massage. I forgot what it was, like a health channel. Yeah. They, what is that foot massage? They say that the bottom of the foot is supposed to have different parts of the oh body. it's uh where they uh rub the feet it's called yeah acupressure reflexology. it's called reflexology yeah yeah maybe that'll work out i don't Re- know i you know i mean i figure i'm gonna be a cripple pretty soon that's the way well, I'm looking tony's got to use the here, wheelchair we, here we go here here's the ball i bought i want that, oh, okay, that's that's got the, this is kind the real of, ball. Yeah. No, this is the real ball. What does that's it say? This says rubs. See the, see the rubs? Yeah. Well, mine says dubs. So, look. Dubs. It, look, 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 look. Yeah. See? My dog, what the off This, though, this really worked. That's a golf ball. Yeah, that's yeah. a golf well, ball. That belonged to Tiger Woods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, let me, and let me he's still it. looking for it. Let me do this a little bit. It, it just seems to work better because it it, it, it kind of digs of in, it kind of digs in there more than the other one does, you know. But what uh, the uh, this or the golf ball? The the actual golf ball. 
Uh, yeah. How can the golf ball dig in if it doesn't have the it, little? It, no, because it in. really does. It it it, it it's yeah. hard. Huh? Yeah, it's it's hard. harder. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah, that's this because is, it was is, Tiger Woods. This is for pussies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me get that. Yeah. Oh, it's feeling bad. Oh, it feels good that I'm using the golf. See, I bet you at the bottom of the foot is. I bet you, you if you got a reflexology massage, I bet you you'd feel good. Nah. They don't know what they're doing. Those you, uh, you know those something. Oriental you places. know something. I I just they don't think, know I think I think there's too much pseudoscience out there, and yeah. some of it is even being practiced by doctors. You, you know? think it's more in the mind than Alex? If you feel you're better, you think you. Well, I I think there's some things that are that way, but there's some things you just can't fix because you, yeah. you know. I know there are people that go to, uh, I think, that go to chiropractors and walk away thinking they're better because they don't want to say they blew 110 bucks. That's right. You, know? you, you know what's been working for me is this rolfing. Yeah, I go every week and uh, also 110 bucks. And it? Uh, it, it has it's, made a yeah, major I, difference. I, I used to get rolfed. Yeah. What is that Rolf meaning? What is that? Uh, there's a woman. Her name was Ida Rolf, and back in the late '60s, she early hated, '70s, she hated men. She said, "I'm going to beat up on them." And this was <laughs> yeah. Uh, she she, uh, she developed a, uh, a, a thing called uh, body manipulation or something. I forgot what she called. Oh, it. she stretched Stru stru it? structural manipulation. And yeah, they stretch the muscles and they and they, and they tear really the dig fascia. in there. They it, it's painful. It's uh, during it's not as painful now that I've been doing it over a year as it was. Uh, I I don't ask them to you stop anymore. It, well, no, I, I it doesn't. You know, I mean, I'm getting beyond the pain. Okay, and, like this chiropractor, I went to him, and uh, yeah. nobody's listening again tonight. I don't know what this is. It's getting got you. it's getting worse. I got worse. 26. 26 is listening. Yeah. Uh, watching, watching. 26. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, normally, that's not bad. No, normally, uh, we've gotten up to like lately get, getting into the higher numbers. You know, by the time the show is over the next morning, there's a there's a hundred and something uh, yeah, watches well, on the thing. Yeah, but you know, I used to have twenty thousand people listen to me. Yeah, you ha used to have hair too. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, I just wonder why I do this every night. Now we're down to twenty four. Fuck all of you. Everybody. Well, that's because they found out you didn't have hair now. Stop listening. <laughs> Just go away. We don't want you. And by the way, this thing isn't going to be played tonight on uh, on the It'll Gabnet uh, On Demand because that's not working yet. Let's see here. No, still not working. Just went to look and see if it was you working. Got, you got to pay that uh, the bill. You know? I paid the bill. It's It's paid through 2020. Yeah, well, yeah. Then maybe they increased it and they didn't tell you. Okay. You know, they're threatening to, to uh, PG&E, mm -hmm. uh, talking about paying the bill. They're threatening to have more uh, blackouts in California because they say it's getting windy and they don't want any more fires. So as soon as the wind kicks up, they're going to turn off everybody's uh, oh, really? utilities. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So it's, it's pushing the sale of flashlights, batteries, candles. But, you know, there won't be any fires from the somebody, electricity, uh, wait, but people wait, wait, will can't, can't set the, their home on fire they, with the candles. Can't the government do something about PG&E doing all this shit? Well, you know, we got Newsom in California, and he, I think he's in cahoots with them. No, I don't uh, think so. Not, <laughs> not Newsom. Newsom is your, is your worst nightmare. Yeah, he is. Because well, he's, all, he's, he's all for the people, you know? Now, he's all for <laughs> his people. <laughs> You know, so. you know he's for five dollar a gallon gas when everybody else is paying two fifty. Yeah. He's for no, he's for you uh, paying five dollars. Huh? He wants his people to pay thirty five cents a gallon. Yeah. His people get it off the state. You know, the state has a credit card and they pay for oh, it. Do they really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so um, uh, I don't know if it's even worth it to talk about anything tonight. Well, I'm trying to think what happened. Uh, you, don't talk Trump tonight. You already oh, did with your ex-wife. No, no yeah. I, I want to. I want to talk about Trump, but I want to talk about something that today. I just. I guess maybe it was. I was in a bad mood or something, and I just got so sick of MSNBC. I just That's said, easy to do. I, no, no. But my feeling was, don't they have anything else to talk about? No. Don't they? They're like a one. 
note song. Yeah. You know, and they keep they keep pushing away at the same shit over and over and over. You know and why? Over. And I'll tell you, they're saying everything I want to hear, but I'm sorry, I don't want to hear it constantly. Well, what they did is they have somebody that listens to GabNet, and whatever we talk about, yeah. they talk about on MSNBC. And now, <laughs> if you go over to Fox during the day, at least they're doing some news of other of other consequence. Yeah, they're you talking know. about Halloween. They're talking about barbecuing. You no, know. no, no. Yeah, they're they're making pies and cakes and cookies. No, but they right. talk about. You know, they they're reporting other news as well. And when they get into their news segments, they're actually doing news. They're not doing like all these Depends shows on, on MSNBC to. during the day should be newscast. Okay, except maybe opinion in the morning and maybe in the late afternoon some opinion show. But the rest of it should be news. And instead, it's hammering away at Trump, hammering away. Oh, we got him this mm -hmm. time. We got him now. You know, and I'm getting so fucking bored. I can't watch it. I just yeah. can't. And even though it's saying everything I want to hear, I can't continue watching it. I know. It, it, it's just enough is enough. Y yeah. yeah. I, and and I then I go over. I took a look at Newsmax today. That's the same thing on, in the other direction. And, and, it's, and cheaply done. <laughs> That's the I, worst part. Uh, I don't know how many months ago it was. What, six months ago? I said uh, you ought to have a Trump-free zone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that the, the tide will change. It's going to be, you know, the, an, the anti, uh, there's going to be a backlash to all of this. Uh, and well, maybe it's no, going to. Here's, here's know, what I said, okay? And yeah. I, I said this to you before about Trump. Yeah. Mm. The, the best thing that MSNBC could do if they wanted to get to Trump was not talk about him. Mm. Right. It would drive him nuts. But if he feels he's driving the conversation his ego is just going, wow, hey, look, I got him. He is, I, I, in fact, I was thinking today about Joe Biden, okay? There's no conversation about him right now. Well, here's what happened. Uh, yes, I think the president did do a quid pro quo with uh, Ukraine, and I think all of that is true. But what he was able to do in the onslaught of all the accusations against him was get the thing in people's minds that Biden was a crook. Okay. Even Hillary now is going after Jill Stein and, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard, saying that they were Russian assets. Can, can you imagine? Well, well, uh, well, forget about it. Let's, we'll get to that in a second. But the yeah. thing is that what happened is Trump effectively eliminated Joe Biden as the candidate. Yeah. He he got rid of his competition simply by inferring that he was trying to find out if he was a crook. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Well, Very smart move on Trump's part. Yeah, uh, he was also doing some investigation to see where this 2016 accusation no, 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 uh, no, no, against no. him came from. Uh, the the accusations against him I think came from a very Hillary. <laughs> no, it, it came from ver it, it's very realistic. It's very. It's not without great possibility. They, okay. Didn't they prove See, that the dossier was uh, was trumped up? The dossier <laughs> had nothing to do with the whole thing. That was the basis of the FISA warrants. What FISA warrants? The ones uh, against uh, 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 Papadopoulos and uh, and a number of other uh, another another. I don't remember, think that I don't think a that, number of other I, people. I don't. I, I I would have to go back and look at you what that whole thing was about. Listen to Fox a little bit more than you've been for listening. Uh, well, <laughs> but, you know, the point. If is, you really want to know the you know the, the other side, the point is that um, uh, be that as it may, what Trump has done has effectively eliminated Joe Biden as a candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he did it by inference. The same thing he did with uh, with Hillary. You know, we want to see the uh, thirty thousand uh, emails. Well, it probably half uh, ninety nine point nine percent of them said, "What time do you want to do lunch?" You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, you know. So he, but what he did by inferring that was that somehow she had done something horrible and disgusting and vile, and so he did the same thing uh, to to Biden. And through, even though they're going through this whole impeachment thing and everything, and maybe they will impeach him, and who knows, 
What he did was he effectively eliminated his most decent competitor. Okay, the yeah, one who had the probably the one who had the best chance against him. Do you think he wants to run against Warren because Warren he can defeat with uh, you know her positions? Uh, I don't think Trump is somebody who can win in a, a, a campaign on positions. He's not that political an animal, and he's not that intelligent about positions. No, all he has to do is go after them as evil and, uh, uh, you know, anti-American, that kind of but stuff. But here's the question. Now, here comes the big question. Is anybody else going to call tonight, by the way? Otherwise, fuck you, and I won't go on tomorrow night, Okay. All right. Oh, in the it, it, just to bring it up in the chat, American Patriot says his dog lived for a year with bone cancer by taking I am humidity. humidity. Uh, I am giving Ella that that uh, it's called Turkey Tail, and I'm buying that brand. Yeah, okay, uh, all right, for her. all right. One hundred and forty bucks for don't, a don't, month support. Don't pay attention to American Patriot. He's a fucking well, idiot. And and he says also structural integration. That's what uh, uh, Rolfing uh, yeah, was okay. originally. All right. So. Anyway, uh, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Thanks for changing the discussion. Oh, so. uh, uh, no, hey, uh, yeah. uh, no, what I was going to say is that um, uh, the Democrats have a problem now. Mm -hmm. They're getting to the point where they're going, you know, we've got nobody. That's right. That's again what this guy says. He says there's and no now, Democrat now that can Trump. Now they're talking about Hillary. <laughs> Oh, yeah. God. That, that'll be a winner. Uh, who else? They're talking about uh, Michelle Obama. Another winner. Well, no, I think she could probably do a good job again uh, uh, as a candidate, but uh, I she just doesn't want. I'm sure she doesn't want it. They're they're having a wonderful time right now with him not being president and her not being in politics. You know, they're getting a lot of things done. They're going on a lot of vacations. They're meeting with a lot of people in foreign countries. They're having they're having the time of their life. And you don't think there's something to the power of the presidency? The, just the uh, you know the uh, that the absolute power that they have. I don't think they're that much into power. I oddly enough, I never thought that Obama was a power guy. You know, that he enjoyed the power. Um, Can I ask a yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Would it be possible, like, say Mitt Romney really dislikes Trump? We we, we can all agree on that, right? Uh, Too okay. No, well, actually, I saw, an interview, I saw an interview with him, and he mm -hmm. said that he kind of tried to keep himself the good guy in the Republican Party by saying, uh, it's not that I'm against Trump, I'm just against some of the things he's doing. And then he listed about everything he's doing. <laughs> you know. yeah. And there's a big it, yeah. Has it ever come, has it ever happened that, let's say a Republican, let's just say Mitt Romney, said, you know what, I, I want to run against Trump and cross party lines? There's two see? guys, there's two guys that declared to run against Trump. I don't remember who they are, but. Uh, they seem to have disappeared, uh, too. They did? They did. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. You don't hear about them much. They don't come up in the news like so and so today said about the mm -hmm. president. Blah blah blah. What's happening to Tom Steyer? Now he's a guy with the dough that really hates Trump. He's a Democrat. But, yeah, uh, I I think that. You and know, I don't know how he we, got on the we, stage. Well, we know who he is because of the money he spent to let us know who he is. Right. Okay. Uh, but nobody seems to really be engrossed by his message. Yeah. Uh, he just doesn't come across as a guy you like. Now, Andrew Yang is the candidate that the Republicans like. I like him. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I like Andrew Yang. Yeah. You know, the guy is is thinking from a different perspective. This this $1,000 a month thing, it shouldn't be okay. his message. His message yeah. is really uh, automation is going to take a lot of jobs, and we have mm -hmm. to prepare the society to deal with this automation and just giving the talking about the thousand dollars a month is really not addressing what he's about. Yeah. And, uh, I think somebody is guiding him and making a mistake by having him push this thousand dollar a month thing. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think Yang is a possibility. I think, I think, what they said I about think Biden's point. out. 
Okay. Yeah. I think Biden's out. I think, Sanders is out. I think Sanders is out because of the heart thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he has. Okay. Oh, boy. I got meat stuck between my teeth. Do I have a... Uh, a Even thing? though they said they did the uh, angioplast on him. Hmm? You want you want a you want a toothpick, Alex? You got one? Good. Yeah, right here. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. No. I got the I got the little skinny ones that uh, right. break well, off like matchsticks. Yeah. I'm just trying to see that. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh God, I want that. I Whoa. need that. <laughs> yeah, they're. Uh... Tony's uh, picture here is huh? he's different. Tony's what? he's out of the uh, thing. Oh, he's got some decoration. Some graphics on there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Different yeah. colors. Yeah. Oh, they, uh, yeah, the little leaves. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. Tony, your, yeah. your house is looking fancier. You know, these colors. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. All colors mm -hmm. back there. Mm -hmm. it, it was, uh, I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> he didn't even notice it. <laughs> Don't you, don't you have one of those uh, jet spray things? What is it? Uh, yeah, I do, but I don't have it. Right. I'm not going to bring it out here and stick it. In no, my no, mouth. you go in you there. But you know, isn't it amazing what comes out Wait of there? Wait a minute, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look in my closet here. See if I have any. Oh, I know yeah. what I have. I don't like the electrical toothbrushes. I use the regular. Oh uh, yeah, they got one an electrical toothbrush that just came out that also it's not flossing. What what uh, uh, the, the water pick? I have a water pick and I have an electric toothbrush. They got an electric there toothbrush go. that's got a water pick built into it. Oh wow! That just came floss. out. What's that soap? There we you go. <laughs> oh, it's floss. Do you ever you ever have that happen that you get something stuck in your teeth, some meat stuck, oh, and you can't, can't get it out, yeah. and, and it annoys you just me. can't you just it. can't get it get it dislodged? Yeah. Here, folks, you're gonna have to watch this on the TV, or or should I turn my head when I do it? No, no, no. This is this is you know huh? radio at its best. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Oh, it's been, it cleans yeah. his teeth. Cleans his teeth. Mm. 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 There we go. Oh, that's huge. Oh. That's yeah. huge. Well, that's your, that was it a, that's a stuffed your... derma from your bar mitzvah? Or uh, yeah, uh... It, that should be that should be coming that should be coming out of my ass, not out of my tooth. You know, it's still in your colon. <laughs> yeah. No, it was really wedged in there, so it was kind of hurting. So anyway, yeah. now I'm going to keep the floss right there. Then every now and then on the air, you can see me floss, folks. Uh, you, you got to, my my dentist gives me these uh, uh, stimudent uh, uh, things. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. My dentist yeah. doesn't give me anything. Oh yeah, no, my dentist does give me something A every time you go to the dentist. When oh, you're through you with your too? dental appointment, the little bag, the little bag with the I little it, toothpaste and the little toothbrush. Now, don't you think I have a toothbrush already at home, and I have toothpaste already at home? Do I need yeah, it? Yeah, but not the travel size. I just spent, and I like I just spent, I just spent a thousand dollars with the dentist, and what I'm getting is twenty five cents worth of tooth. They can't even give me a huge tube of toothpaste, right? <laughs> they really come in handy because you can't get them through the TSA if they're huge. You gotta have under three ounces. Under three ounces, yeah. Well, anyway, you I, know, yeah. and pretty soon they're gonna put TSA on trains, and you're gonna find that you know you're gonna have to take your shoes off. Oh, you know what? Just I to get. visit Jeff. You know. You know what? Oh, I, there's your Colgate. I just went Saturday. What did I? What did he give me? If he took let's, my let's see what let's see what you got. Showing. Let's see. Let's see. How much did you spend for that? Oh, Colgate. Colgate. Yeah, yeah. I got one of those. I got a Colgate. Nice. That's a nice what is that? I asked for the Sensodyne. Oh, I get the. I Sensodyne. got my receipt from my bill thrown in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget my balance. <laughs> Oh, look, he gave me the little floss thing. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Hmm. I owe him $200 and the braces are free and clear. Really? Really? He keeps trying to no, tell no. me. He keeps trying to tell me. We, I can't wait to do the bridge work, the three, four, five, six. Yeah, you keep waiting. I want to wait to see if I got dental insurance. Then we'll get back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, so, uh, so uh, where where were we? So... Anyway, you I'm, were flossing. I, I am just <laughs> to begin with. We need we like like this. Supposed to be this, this is getting ridiculous. You know, what's it? Is this show getting so fucked up now that nobody wants to call it or listen to it? No, I, I think Although there's there's going on. Is there a World Series, series tonight? There or was something? a world. There was a World Series tonight, but it should be. Is it over? 
Uh, no, they're still playing. They started during they're in, they're in oh, the sixth. Still well, playing. they should be over. Oh. You're right. They should be over because I left it in the sixth inning and they were losing the Astros. Uh, uh, who, the Astros were losing? Who cares? Yeah, who actually, cares? the pitch is getting hit. I, I, was saying, I was saying this to girlfriend today. Who really gives a shit about the uh, uh, a World Series between the Washington team and mm. the Houston team? I mean, who cares? Who gives a well, shit? Well, people I mean, in Houston and people in Washington. Place, but I won't watch with the same interest. You know, yeah. always when it's something like the Yankees versus uh, oh, the Dodgers or something like that. Yeah, uh, you yeah know, Yankees, Dodgers. Then, then, I'd be up for the Giants. Yeah, the, the Giants. Yeah, you know, the then you got yourself a, a barn burn. A game. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, these two teams don't really oh, do much. Uh, uh, they history. said it's in the eighth inning now on the uh, no, really? chat. No. Yeah. Well, fuck all of you baseball people, okay? Now, uh, it looks like uh, yeah. China and the NBA are uh, at odds. I know that you don't like negative shit about China, but, uh, you know, some people are saying that, uh, you know, they're quelling free speech and that the NBA is selling out to uh, for the ability to sell jerseys, well, let's put it this T-shirts, way. The NBA, and there are two people that don't know how to handle their, their respective situations. Uh, the NBA does not know how to handle this, okay? Bad, yeah, okay, no. and the Chinese do not know how to handle Hong Kong. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, they they are working on old tapes and old precepts of how they want their country to be, and they don't know that they could handle this by simply allowing a little more freedom about giving the impression that they're giving more freedom. But instead, they want to clamp down. You're not going to fuck with us, you know. Didn't they have a, an agreement uh, when uh, no. in 97 when no. Hong Kong was turned over no. that for so many years, no. I think it was 50 years, that they wouldn't uh, no. interfere? No. No. In, no, no, I'm pretty sure there no, was there an wasn't. agreement. No, there wasn't an agreement. There was no agreement at all. The agreement was we're giving the country back to... No, it was... Uh, we're giving, I'll look it up. We, it, there was no agreement, Phil, but there was... A what could we call it? A transition thing. There was a a understanding, okay, but it, there was nothing written in the transition. China could have gone in there and clamped down with a heavy hand, but they didn't want to because uh, Hong Kong was a, a fucking money maker. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it, it made a fortune for China, so they yeah. didn't want to fuck with it. And lately, they've 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 gotten a little heavy-handed, and they shouldn't really try to screw the golden goose. That's really what they're doing, and that's where they're making their big mistake. Okay, uh, you know, I mean, um, yeah, I just, I just, and I, I feel sorry about it because I think China has the potential to be just this really great country. Uh, I happen to think it's a great country already to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. You know. Um, yeah. Tell me about what you what you really enjoyed about going there. I think the people are wonderful. I think the Beijing and the outlying countryside where we went is beautiful and wonderful. I, I, I uh, found it. Uh, what? Uh, it says the Hong Kong basic law ensured, among other things, that Hong Kong would retain its legislative system and people's rights and freedom for 50 years as a special administration region or SAR of China. Uh, and it had to do with the handover of Hong Kong. So there, there was a 50 year agreement. But they, after could the claim, handover. they could claim they're not violating that. Uh, well, they wanted to change. Uh, they wanted to prosecute. Um, uh, I, I believe that's why the protests started. There was something they about people prosecuting they on mainland China. Right. The yeah, and uh, and so they these uh, the Hong Kong uh, residents stood up to that, and that's what these protests yeah. have been about. Well, now you know I have a, a wife who works for the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she has people who work in Hong Kong and have their offices in Hong Kong. 
And their, their thinking is they're not exactly for these demonstrations. You know, they think that it's, 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 it, it's screwing up. It's not up. good for business. It's not good for business. And, and right. that's what Hong Kong's all about. Uh, I think there's a better way for the Chinese government to handle this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to see. Here's the thing: China had the Chinese government has the inability to do. Okay, we want these people returned to China uh, to be able to try them here. No, we don't want you to. We're going to march in the streets, and rather than say, "Okay, are wrong," okay, we'll back down. We won't do that. They can't bring themselves to show a weakness in their strength. What they perceive as being their strength. And and yeah. and they're gonna they're gonna fuck themselves up over that. Uh, the Telegraph from the UK yeah. uh, says China uh, says uh, they have a legally binding Hong Kong handover handover treaty with Britain, and uh, the China uh, the binding treaty uh, uh, on the mainland will last for fifty years after the nineteen ninety seven handover. So there is. A binding treaty, and they probably uh, and the Chinese probably will sit there and chapter and verse tell you how they're not violating that. Well, you know, then when you look at Trump and how he is negotiating uh, over trade with China, he has taken a stance and he's not acquiesced. Oh, you want to know, you know something? Yeah, China's going to win that one, Phil. I don't know so. because I, China I, knows how to finesse Trump. Well. Okay. He, he refuses to acquiesce. Well, uh, he, 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 you don't know how much he is acquiescing or not acquiescing. You're just oh. listening to him tell you what he's doing. And quite frankly, I think the Chinese know exactly how to play him. No. You know. uh, no remember, I'm not, I'm remember not you're, talking, to him. you're talking. I'm listening to Hannity. You're, you're, <laughs> ta you're talking about it. Look, you're talking about a terrible businessman, Phil. Well, so far, he's doing a good job. Oh, really? Oh, doing what? Well, he's getting rid of all those onerous uh, regulations. Well, what, mean the you ones, mean the ones that have protected the environment? Well, sometimes you can overprotect. Oh, you can overprotect the environment. Okay. Yeah. You can over, you can over, you can over, you can over unpollute the air. I yeah, see. you can't do. Okay. You can't walk into <laughs> this place. You can't build a bridge that's needed because there's a butterfly that you might uh, offend. That's that's a, Phil. That is a absolute. That's only outright, in California. No, that's absolutely an outright lie. That doesn't happen all that often. It happens in California. There are horned toad frogs and no, stuff like that. No, that's what you've heard. Give me an, a specific they case got where that happens. They signs that say you know newts and other things. Really? Yeah. What? They got signs of Newt Crossing and Newt Gingrich. Uh, and yeah, there was a frog, there was a butterfly, there was some seat sea flies or something. Uh, yeah. You know, California, uh, the environments, our environmentalists would use anything to stop uh, people from uh, progressing. You really think so? Yeah. And, you know, they use whatever loophole they can use. If they could find something that they think Phil, is Phil, we haven't, or... you know, we have, there's a thing called the EPA. It's the mm -hmm. Environmental Protection Agency. Even what, Reagan wanted what to What of those of three words don't you like? Uh, you know, uh, on concentration camps, there well, was... Phil, uh, Phil, I'm asking you a question. Don't go to concentration okay. camps. Okay, you can use words What about you EPA? Want. What about EPA... Makes no sense to you. Environmental there's, there's Protection when, Agency, Phil. In order to keep themselves relevant, they have to keep uh, coming up with stuff to ban. And, you know, eventually they'll ban air. And uh, you, you know, you're believing all these lies, Phil. It's and, not but true. So are you. It's not true. They're out there to protect the environment for you and me so we can breathe the air. There's got to be a balance between reality and overprotection. You know, it's like wearing two condoms. <sighs> Phil, come on. Come on. Yeah, you know, I, I, every time you see these political packs, they mm. come up with these names that you think that they're so good for the country. But really what they're doing is uh, they're doing evil things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
uh, you know, here's a pack for the preservation of freedom. And, and really what it is, is, is something that wants to take away your freedom. You know, yeah, you you know something. You come up with these 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 these, these scenarios that don't even exist, Phil. Because he's they're true. Out. No, I'm because you him. sit there watching sources which make you believe them, but and then you go, oh yeah, yeah, they're going after the horn. They're trying to protect the horned toad. Believe yeah. me, Where's if the if toad? there was a freeway to be built in L.A. and there was a horned toad in the way, they'd squash him fucking flat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, come on. Man. Yeah, I, you know, know, not, not, they build an overpass over the Horned Toad because they walk over there. Yeah. Silly, you know who he reminds you of? I was watching All the Family with my mother. Yeah. He reminds you of Archie Bunker. Who? Phil? Uh, Ar Phil? But Archie didn't believe Phil. like, like I he believe. comes up when you ask him a question. He'll come up with something totally like obtuse. There, is there, uh, uh, with Phil, there isn't a racial component, I don't think. No, you're right. I think there may was be Archie a naiveness not, towards yeah. race, but yeah. there is. he's not a racist. No, no I not at all. Yeah, I mean, in a funny way, like he comes up with things sometimes. You know. Yeah, Archie was racist. You're right about you that. You know, I, I, I have traveled in my life extensively, and I understand that the world does not revolve around me or where I'm from uh, or this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and as a scuba diver, I actually travel in a way where I'm in such a foreign environment that I need a tank to breathe air. And that I'm just a guest of the sharks and the other things that I hang out with. But and you are afraid of them taking your guns away. You have said that to Alex. I'm, not, af afraid I'm not afraid of them. I'm going to fight to make sure they don't. But you know they're not going to take it away. They just want to put safety laws in you so know, crazy people don't have get Have you ever heard of death by a thousand cuts? That's what's going on uh, with the fight against uh, gun ownership. Well, yeah, I've heard of death by a thousand cuts, but it's an entirely different thing. So. No, because they're trying to uh, Phil, uh, cut Phil, and cut Phil, and Phil, cut Phil, away. Phil. Right now, I think it, that they should cut it all away. I think they yeah. should take your guns away from you and not allow you to play with them. Okay. Right now, it's it's the magazines, it's the uh, the the color of the gun. If it's black, it's I bad. agree with that entirely, and I think that. Uh, uh, the faster that we can eliminate guns from this society, the better off we're going to be because we've learned we do not know how to use them. Well, you can't take them away from the bad guy. No, you tell yeah, kids when a kid Friday, when a kid uses when a kid uses his gun badly or a toy badly, you take it away from him. Yeah, but that's a kid. Well, Americans have not been terribly responsible with their that's, we opponents. That's not a terrorist that's full of hate. On Friday, I'm going to be at a Shabbat, and I, I will We're down be to 22 people, by the way. Fuck you and your goddamn baseball game, okay? Yeah, and <laughs> I'm going to be providing security for a synagogue. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a part of a group that's mm -hmm. been training to, uh, to do security at synagogues, so we understand, you know, how to move the crowd out and... Get shouldn't, shouldn't a bunch of Jews, shouldn't we Jews all get together and figure out what we're doing that pisses people off? Uh, we've been, <laughs> we've been the chosen I don't, people I don't for mean thousands that, folks. of years. That's, that's, I don't mean that. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I think it was Bell Barth said, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm one of the chosen people. Why, why don't they just choose somebody else one, once in a while Yeah, you know, <laughs> to hate? Hey, are you going to carry a gun Friday then? Yeah. Well, I'm surprised they let him have a gun in a synagogue. Two. Two guns? Yeah. Why do you need two guns? Inside so you can go ping, I, ping, ping, ping? Uh, I'll be all around. Really? I'll be in. I'll why, be why two in, guns, In the Phil? congregation. Why, why I'll two, be outside. Why, why two synagogue? guns, Phil? Are going to have a gun? Yeah. Why two? two? Why two? You better tell the, the rabbi. You always need a backup. Did you hear me, Phil? Yeah. Why two? Why two? You always need yeah. a backup? Why? Yeah. Well, if a, if your gun jams you, or you have a uh, uh, something happens, you need uh, you need a uh, backup to uh, make you know to go to. Uh, I just you know true truthfully, I should bring in my shotgun, but it's not concealable right. enough. And uh, well, I so went, I went to the synagogue in Argentina. <laughs> I can, I can oh, see. I can see them doing. I can see them doing the Kol Nidra, and somebody's oh. there with a shotgun. I mean, 
it's a peaceful place. He's kind of shocked. It's a little bunch. house in the prairie got crazy. Wait, wait a minute, Jeff's talking. Yeah. What? Sorry. A lot of people were killed there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a long time ago, I think it was 10 years ago, maybe it was five years ago when I went there the last time. Mm-hmm. And my friend took took us to take a tour. And they said, oh, you got to go see the synagogue. It's really uh, it's really old and it's, it's kind of pretty and and uh, you, you'd be interested in it. And then my friend, who's a, crash, a Christian, he says, yeah, and I used to go to bar mitzvahs there all the time. Wow. When I was a teenager, because a lot of my friends were Jewish. And so anyway, we go to get there, and the first thing is the door is locked. So you got to knock on the door. The guy comes out. He's got a gun. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's not the rabbi. <laughs> and he wants to know who you are, why you're here, how have you been here before, Blah 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 blah. Where oh, was I, where was this again? Argentina. Uh, Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Yeah. Argentina. I, and anyway, the guy says, "All right, we'll go talk to the rabbi and see if he wants to talk to you." Meanwhile, he closes the door. We're still outside, and uh, I'm saying, "Boy, they're really got. Have, have they had a lot of problems?" And he goes, well, yeah, a lot of people did get killed there about a year ago or so, but they didn't want to do it again. So finally, the rabbi came out and he talked to us a little bit, and he says, all right, why don't you guys come in? He says, you're you're fine, you can come in. And he gave us a little, and he spoke very perfect English, and and it was easy to talk to all of us. And he gave us a tour, he told us about what happened and what the situation was, and it was very nice. But it was definitely much more uh, risked yeah. against, okay? I mean, yeah. you're talking about having one guy around. This place was locked up. Now, there's going to be at least three of us, plus the rabbi packs. That's good. Really? And, yeah, we've been training the rabbis uh, at the different oh, Chabad's to, uh, to be able to join in and uh, help us out if there was a, an incident. And uh, the, uh, you, know, you know what happened in Pittsburgh. I mean, you know, the, it was a guy, I th- think, outside that, uh, that had a gun. Well, and he it, wasn't it, even it, part it, of the it, it, synagogue. It happened in, you know, the question is, yes, these things do happen. Yeah. Uh, and there's more and more anti-Semitism uh, 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 all the time. I, yes, there's, but there's always been anti-Semitism, sure. Phil. Come on, I was growing up in North Beach, the most anti-Semitic place I've ever lived in my life. Yeah, they looked for your horns, okay. and they and they it, called you dirty Jew, but they didn't shoot you. No, but what I'm saying is is that anti-Semitism has existed, and for, and for any Jew who says, gee, I, I, didn't, I didn't know it existed. What do you mean, fuck you, if you don't know it existed. You're, you're a fucking idiot. Did you hear about the Holocaust? Uh, you know, just, that's for starters, okay? Oh, I read it didn't exist. You know, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, so, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, but I think Spain. that if we go around mm-hmm. arming every synagogue, because we're afraid that this is going to happen. Uh, no, the reason you arm is because you're not afraid. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Phil. Maybe you might get your head blown off just because you got that gun and because you were there to protect it. I mean, what makes you so sure that you're so good that if somebody came into that uh, that uh, uh, synagogue I'm not, and started I'm, shooting, that you would be able to take him down before he took you yeah, down? He might freeze. My mental mindset, my uh, my uh, no, training. No, Phil. Phil. I've, he's, I've had, let's say he's got well an AK-47. You're fucking hamburger meat, Phil. Yeah, he might freeze. Uh, you know, I might be. But how many people would uh, would live because maybe probably, probably I could none take because him he out. might aim at you first because you're the one with the gun. He may he's not going to see my gun until I'm Phil, ready to fire. All I'm saying is just because you're there isn't going to change anything. Well, you don't know that, and there's no. A fight I do know that mentality. Phil. Logic tells me, you know, it's only 
a bad logic that says by you being there with a gun, you're going to prevent somebody else from a gun from coming in and doing what he's going to do. If that guy comes in with an AK-47 and he wants to wipe out as many people as he can before he gets shot himself, he doesn't give a shit, Phil. No, they don't give a shit. But you know what? I might be able to save lives. I did... I did this kind of work for free for 20 Phil. years. I'm doing it for free on Friday. I don't charge to, to provide the security, but it, it's what I do. It's a training that I have. It's an ability that I have. And I uh, continue to practice and, and continue to train, and I will continue to do something good with it. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that it's completely wrong, but I just, I, I just think that... The incidents we talk about are few and far between. Okay, and I hope let that me they finish. never. Let occur. me finish. Few yeah. and far between. The reason we hear about them is because once they happen, the news doesn't stop talking about it, and they make it larger and bigger than it really is. Uh, I don't think that every synagogue in America is under siege. I think that the chances of this happening again are remote. Uh, I would rather I, it I, not happen. Hmm? I would rather uh, all I do is sit there and yeah, listen but, to but, the Shema. But, but the <laughs> reason why it happened was because nobody was all that aware of that kind of thing happening. And so it just it happened. And this particular synagogue had the unfortunate luck of the draw in it all. You know, you know? Uh, if there are a lot of uh, boy. We're down to twenty people now. This must really be yeah. must. Yeah. Well, they they don't like Jews either. But uh, you know, they, they, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, neo-Nazi activity uh, against synagogues and yeah. and white uh, terrorists. You know, the uh, what do they call those guys? Uh, uh, you know, KKK, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of people out there with hate, and if if we don't stand up and do something, even if I'm just sitting down while it's being done. Uh, you know, if I wasn't there and something happened, I, I have no control over it. But if I am there, I have control. And if I if I lose my life, then Phil, that's Phil, the consequence. The chances of that happening are, uh, I would be willing to bet $100,000 you're not going to get killed this weekend. I, I agree and that with nobody's you. that nobody's going to come in there with a gun. I will be. <laughs> you know, well, I'll then be there's it. a gun on premise already. Yeah. How do we know you're not going to go crazy? Yeah. Well, how can we you know, how can we be so sure that Phil Meyer, the guy who's going to come to protect this, actually isn't nuts in himself? It's the cancer. <laughs> it's the cancer. Well, you have nothing to nothing to live nothing for. Nothing to lose. Nothing yeah, to lose. Right. So, <laughs> you know. Bring them on. Oh, Terrorists are man, us. Oh, you know? man. I've been but rubbing the, my foot on the golf ball for the whole show. At least I'm getting something done tonight, in spite of yeah. the fact there's nobody. A callus from the golf ball. Yeah. <laughs> well, this probably means a lot of people will actually watch the thing after the pack, but. Maybe I won't post it. Well, they can't go see it on the on-demand because the on-demand is not working. Let's see. Have they got, got it working yet? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look no, at a different no, source. No, nope. It's still not working. Okay. So, ah, fuck them. You know? Uh, I, I pay these people. I see the on-demand banner. Um, no. no. You push the button. You don't see the on-demand bat. Yeah, I do. I see it. If you do, uh, do you see the on-demand list? You don't see the on-demand banner. That, oh no, the underneath the uh, no, this, live feed. No, on the on the left-hand side there is nothing, Phil. Oh yeah, on the left-hand side there's nothing. Yes. See. Well, you, you know, that, I think that's because Jack didn't have a show and Damien didn't have no, a show. No, no, no. It's, it's, it, if you go over to um, iTunes, folks, you'll be able to get all the shows, okay? Yeah. But uh, it's, it's that that's not working. And it's, it, what, it, what it is is it's, a, it's a, a, a service that I subscribe to that allows mm -hmm. me to put that list on the page, Okay. And for some reason, they're down. I went to them, and it's not working, you know. 
you know, so. Yeah. And, now you and would, and you it's probably too it late like at night. to so, lose your electricity in California. Yeah. You know what I did on my watch? On my watch now, I, yeah, I, I added my, uh, my uh, Apple wallet, so I can now use my watch to pay for stuff. Hmm. I just. Uh, I, I wonder if you're walking around. Can people? I, I double. Hack your I double. Watch? I double click it like that and see. There, there, folks. Is my. If, I don't know if you can see it, but there's the. Uh, Not on Skype, but. Uh, hey. Yeah. You, you know the RF signals. Uh, what do they call that? Uh, where uh, there's a very short range where uh, the signal can be picked up. Uh, they use it for advertising. I I talked about a chip. Once uh, N NFCI or some some kind of chip. Oh, near uh, near field. Uh, near field. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm wondering if the watch, you, when you're walking around, yeah, if somebody could read that stuff, pick up your uh, credit card and and so forth, and use I, it. To I make believe charge. I believe that that's pretty. Have to be pretty close to the reader. I uh, because it was it, maybe I, 30 I I've been or? I've been too far away from the reader. Like I'm talking about the difference between. Here oh, between what, and yeah. here and here and it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So it it uh, it's it, it would not radiate around. So be, and it doesn't matter if people can read it anyway. Oh, they can't take that information, clone it, and then no, charge no, things. No. I, listen, they can do anything these days. You know, yeah. they, they 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 can fuck us up any way they want to, and royally, yeah. I might add. They're they're able to read the strip on your credit card, uh, you know, in stores and stuff like that, just by walking around. For instance, I have a. Well, a, he, look, a, you want to you want to be afraid of something, Phil? This is here. Uh, here, do you want to be afraid? Yeah. You want to be afraid of something? Yeah, I got something for you to be afraid of. Go to a restaurant, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If they don't charge your card in front of you with that little machine, they could be running it. And how many places room. have those little machines? Uh, a few. Ruth a Chris few, does. a few. But they mostly go into the back room and run yeah. your card. And while they're in the back room running your card, they could be taking the information off your stripe. They could be doing any number of things. That's why yeah. in Europe, there is not a restaurant you go into. Where they don't have the thing that comes to your table and they run the right. card right I there. I think that's a great idea. Uh, you know, I had a card. Uh, uh, and I had just gotten it mm -hmm. and uh, this several years ago, and I booked a scuba trip in Maui, mm -hmm. and I gave them my credit card number over the phone. Yeah. I had never used that card for any other charge. It's within minutes of giving them that credit card number over the phone, uh, I, I got a call from the, um, uh, from the credit card company that somebody charged $5,000 in Spain for a watch. And, uh, so, you know, I said, well, look, the, the only transaction that could have taken place was this one transaction. So this is this, this scuba company, they're the. They're the leaky wheel. How they manage to do it that fast, though? Usually they get the number and they sell it, it to somebody or the whatever. Was, I think they did it themselves. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's for it to happen that quickly and with that only one transaction. And it wasn't as if the transaction was yeah. swiped or anything like that. It was just I gave them a credit card number over the Here's phone. the only place you're safe. When you told the credit card company that, they didn't charge you the $5,000, right? No, no. Matter of fact, they... They didn't even let the charge go through for the five thousand. The fraud department called me. Why anybody would do that, though? Because if I were to suddenly, I was in a foreign country, and suddenly we were to spend five thousand dollars, my card would have a hard time going through because they would think twice about it. They would well, check, nowadays. They would check with me and whatever because they would go. Mm -hmm. That's that's an extra. Like Marjorie with her, she takes care of the credit cards for all the people in her office, and they travel all around the world. And occasionally yeah. she gets a call, and they say, my credit card isn't working. And she's got a call like HSBC or whoever has got the mm -hmm. credit card and say, would you let that go through? Because it's legitimate. The guy is in Dubai, and he needs yeah. money right now. You know, so, yeah. so that happens all the time when they see extraordinary... Stop. Uh, I got this from the government. This is an RFI. This is my global entry card, to, so I don't have to go through TSA the same way. I don't take my shoes off mm -hmm. or belt. 
And this came with the card. It's uh, and it says that it's um, uh, protect your card, sensitive electronics, and your privacy. Keep the card in the sleeve when not in use. Hmm. And uh, I got you know, this. I, DMV online services. Yeah, this is where they you can put your license if you want to. Although I put it in my wallet, like most people do. Yeah. But I got my new license with I'm a little American flag on it. It's oh, the, in California, we've got a bear with a star in it. Yeah. I just got it, uh, the, the golden bear. Yeah, yeah. So I now have my... my Real ID? Real ID, yeah. Um, but uh, we don't travel that much that I get that go-through-TSA fast thing. But this will allow me on an airplane, but then again, so will my passport. So that whole idea yeah, that you need It's harder to this. carry the passport. You always got your license. I'll tell you, whenever I travel even to California, someplace like that, I take my passport with me. Yeah. Because you can use that for identification at banks and, mm. you know, all different places where you might need to prove who you are. You know, uh, so. Even if you don't have any money in the bank? Even if I don't <laughs> have any money in the bank. <laughs> usually the case, you know, but uh, yeah. anyway. Mm. Oh, God, you know what? Mm. Another five more minutes and you're done. Yeah, five more minutes and I'm done. And uh, we only have 20 people watching. Mm. There'll be 120 in a couple of hours. Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. uh, we long. had like, uh, uh, we had like, we're up to around 40 or something at any one time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I give up. On this whole thing, it's just it's not worth my time, you know. What else are you gonna do? What What else am I gonna do? Yeah, I just sit here and. Who are you gonna fetch to? Once I've got the show on, I feel okay because there's very little that I can fuck up. But once I'm while I'm trying to get it on, every night something has gone wrong. Like tonight, I pushed the wrong button, and and uh, uh, hmm. this was during the part that doesn't get seen on the final version you know sometimes you got to know how to do it wrong in order to do it right uh, you know? <laughs> uh I, I, that's a that's an interesting postulate phil and i'll have yeah. to think that one over but i think you're full of shit it, do we have baseball <laughs> tomorrow night tony yes you do oh. Oh, but i think you'll get people I, tuesday's always a slow night well, so if, if, it, if that was the eighth inning back in the uh you know a half hour 45 minutes ago uh, who won? Oh, uh, the Nationals beat them 5-4. I just got an update. Now, are the Nationals from Washington, D.C., or where are they from? Well, originally they're from Montreal, but they left Montreal to go to Washington years ago. And they so became it's really the Washington Ice State or D.C.? No, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. So DC. that's Trump hometown now. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And it's called, they're called the, uh, what are they called? The, the, the Redskins uh, or something? Nation. The Washington Nash. Nationals. Weren't they the Senators at one time? You know, I got to ask Shecky would know that. I think the Yankees, no, I don't know who were the Senators. There was a team the Senators. There was Alex. a team the Senators, yeah. I have to look at my baseball book, I think they're led by the Republicans. Well, right now they might be. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. I wonder if Trump will throw out the first pitch in Washington for game one. Nah. Nobody but wants him to show up for anything. I do because I want to see him get booed. You know that that he he won't do it because he doesn't want to get booed. I was going to ask. He only wants to go to those rallies where he's loved. All the tickets, all the tickets will go to constituents. You suck! Imagine you get some guy with like three beers in him already. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's the theme song. Ah, yes. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. And and your doctor doesn't think I got anything to worry about, right? Nah, you're all right. Okay. Phil. Bill is in the mail. Thank you, Phil, <laughs> uh, for being here tonight. And thank you, Tony. I appreciate the three of you showing up tonight. And for the rest of you who didn't, uh, you can go fuck yourselves, okay? How's that for warming up the audience and making them love me? Uh, why don't you guys wave goodbye and I'll wave goodbye back at you, okay? There we go, folks. There goes the citizen panel. Bunch of really regular fellas. Who, uh, who tonight uh, were nice enough to call, unlike a lot of other people. But, you know, what the hell. Anyway, listen, uh, uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He's got a thing called The Intersection. He's back. And then uh, we'll be back here tomorrow night. First, we got the uh, franchise MC. He's got a 
great little sports show if you've never heard it. And then uh, after that, uh, that will be Damien Chaplin with The Exchange. And then after that, I'll be back again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, yeah, as always, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. See? I fucked up again. <laughs> Push the wrong button. I've got to move that button down. <laughs>